So this is an eight by eight canvas, I believe. Yes, and I bought this from Dick Blick. It's an eight by eight uh, yellow gallery profile canvas, which means it's the thicker one and it is splined. There's a little piece of something, something there. So we're working on an eight by eight canvas and you can almost see my lap, can't you? And so we are going to, where'd my plate go? I lost it. Lost my palette plate. I have to use this dirty one. It'll be all right then. So I'm going to first start with my sky. Okay, this is a pre-primed canvas, so I don't really have to do anything to get started. Um, we're just going to start uh, with our sky, and I'm going to tell you what colors we're using, and we're just going to keep on keeping on. So I'm going to use this large paintbrush to do my sky, and then I'm going to work a little bit with my palette knife. This is a palette knife. I'm gonna work a little bit with my palette knife to kind of get my beach scene going on. Then we're gonna add some shells, a little bit of glass, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I think you're gonna like this, okay? So let me just tell you this. Uh, if you, um, and somebody else can explain what this means, but if you sprinkle the love, if you have a friend you think would be interested in watching this video or maybe interested in joining our art group, if you would let them know we're here, if you know what I mean, if you would push that button and let them know we're here, sprinkle the love, we are going to give this art piece away uh, on Monday for anybody who does that. So sprinkling means telling your friends we're here, letting them know to come watch this video with you. And then for everybody who does that, we're gonna put your name in a hat and we're gonna give this art piece to the winner. How about that? How about that? So let's just get started. So I am gonna start, I'm gonna wet my brush and I am going to start with some blue, and this is this is for my sky. This is Spa Blue by Americana. So I'm gonna shake that sucker up, and I'm gonna put some of this on my palette. I know this is terrible, but I got resin on my good plate, so we're gonna have to make do with what we have. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that blue and a little bit of this um, Anita's White. I know, this is, I know. And this is my third live today. So I'm in, I'm in the groove. I am in the groove, man. Okay, so I'm gonna do my blue first because skies are blue, and then we're gonna add a little bit of white in and maybe add a few little clouds with our palette knife. So I'm gonna go in to my blue, and we're just going to give us some sky, I don't know, about halfway, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. So I'm gonna say about right there. And then that'll be the sky, so I'm just gonna add that in. And I'm kinda using the side. I'm not painting like with my tips up, and I'm not painting like this. I'm kinda using the side of my brush because I just like that horizontal flow of the paint when you're doing a sky. It kinda gives it that, um, that sky look, in my opinion. I might be crazy. I might be making that up. You just never know. You just don't know what might come out of my mouth. So I'm gonna just add in that blue. Make sure our line is as straight as we can because the horizon is straight. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that off and we're gonna add a little bit of white. So I'm gonna dip into my white and I'm gonna kinda do the same thing. I'm just gonna come in and just add an eye. Woo! What's that? It's dirty. Add in just a little cloud effect. And this is not fancy. We're not making big fancy clouds. Mostly what you, do, what you want, I got too much water in my brush. That's the problem. What you want is for it to be really organic and no straight lines, no perfection. So we'll just throw in a cloud or two. Here and there. See, that's a little straight line there, so we're gonna add in. Add in a little something, something. All right, 
pretty happy with that. So now I want to do my horizon, okay, my, where my water is. So our, wa our water is going to start right here at the horizon. And when you're standing on the beach and you're looking out across the water, it's going to be darkest at the horizon. And the closer it gets to you, it's going to get a little bit lighter. So we're going to start with our darkest color first. And I pulled out Americana Midnight Blue. Yeah, I did a golf ball earlier. If y'all missed it, you should totally go back and watch it. It was super fun to do. So I'm gonna use that for my darkest color at the horizon. Then I'm gonna pull in a little bit of this tropical blue, Americana. Put, go ahead and put some of that out. Look at these colors, guys. They're delicious. Then we're gonna use uh, Anita's Island Green. Thank you for the sprinkles, Lisa. Sprinkle away, all the sprinkles. Somebody's gonna get an art piece for sprinkling. Okay, so here are our delicious three blues, okay? This is gonna be our horizon far away. This is our mid-tone color, which is gonna be about in the middle of the water. Then we're gonna bring in this lighter blue and some white, because as you get closer to the shore, it's going to be um, a lighter color. But before we start on our paint, we're gonna do a little bit of sand on the opposite end. So I'm gonna use Oyster Beige by Americana and just add a little bit, I'm gonna put it right on here, and I'm gonna use my palette knife. Thank you for the sprinkles. I'm gonna use my palette knife, I think. It might not blend enough. No, I'm gonna need more blending than that. And just blend out some of the sand color. I might need to lighten it a little bit. So this is obviously not destined sand because it would not be the sandy colored. It's obviously like East Coast or something. A little too much. All right, so this is our sand color. I'm gonna blend it up into the water a little bit. That brush isn't big enough, it's making me angry. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our water. I'm gonna rinse that. It's kinda dark looking on the video to me. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so what I want to do, I've, I've got a larger brush, and I wanna have a nice uh, a brush that the bristles are really nice and sharp, okay? So what I'm gonna do is start with my darkest color, which is this dark navy blue color, and I'm gonna just make a line of dark blue right across our horizon. So I'm gonna dip in there, get a nice load, get a load, and just make myself that dark horizon line. You gotta hold your mouth right when you're doing that too, because that's a little crooked. All right? So I'm gonna bring it down a little. That's not a great color. Um, it's kind of sheer. Somebody was saying something to me on the boot camp or on the um, rain boots page about some of the colors being thinned down a little bit, and that one seems to be. Uh, a little thinner than normal too. So there is our horizon color. And now I'm gonna offload that. I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just getting the excess off on a paper towel. So just offload the excess. And I'm gonna go into my mid-tone and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna bring it up. I'm gonna blend this too, so don't freak out. We're gonna br bring that up into that blue. And then offload, we're gonna go into this beautiful teal color. We're gonna bring that in. And you can make the water as, you know, as big or as little as you want. I'm gonna do about a third, third, third. And now I'm gonna rinse because I'm gonna put a little bit of water. Well, I'm wiggling, aren't I? Wiggling the whole table. So I'm gonna go into my white and I'm gonna blend that out at the bottom. 
And we're putting glass and stuff here on um, the bottom of that, so don't stress too much about what that looks like. I am gonna clean that up a little. Clean that up a little. Okay, so th there we have our three colors. So now I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm going to just kind of blend those together. Smush them together. And I'm gonna add some white up in there too for like little uh, crests, little waves. So that blends that together really nicely. But we're gonna add with our brush I'm, I'm dipping just the tips of my bristles, okay? So just point straight down and dip in to that paint. And I am going to tickle in just a few little waves. We'll add a few more down here where they're gonna break. At the shoreline. And that's really as about as simple as it gets. So you can do as many or as little as you want there. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more of that blue right here. It's a little shy. A little bit shy. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll bring some of that down in here. So that, see how simple that was? That was so fast and so stinking easy to make that cute little beach art. So we got our sand, we got our sky, beautiful sky, very few clouds, and we have our water. So we really need this to dry before we can do anything else. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna grab my blow dryer, try not to blow everywhere, but I'm gonna clean up the side real quick so that it's nice and clean before we resin. Make sure, especially over here where the dark color meets your edge, you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Beautimus, beautiful. Okay guys, so we'll put that in the water and I'm gonna hit this real quick with a blow dryer. I do wanna show you one more thing. If uh, you prefer to use your palette knife to make um, some little waves, you can take your palette knife and just scrape it into your white paint so that your paint is on the edge of that knife there. And then you can come in and just make some little sharp lines instead of using your bristles of your brush. Just some sharp little wave lines. Let me show you that up close. So that's kind of what that looks like. Pretty. Okay, so I'm going to say this. If you are super hearing sound sensitive, I'm about to whip out the blow dryer and blow this dry really fast. It should take maybe two minutes. Thank you for sprinkling. Somebody tell everybody what sprinkling means and why you want to sprinkle. So I'm gonna bring out my blow dryer. It's literally gonna take me one minute to get this dry. That way we can go ahead and finish it up, put our glass and resin on here without having to wait 30 minutes for the paint to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna hook my blow dryer up. So turn your volume down, speak amongst yourselves, and I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer. I'll be back in a jiffy. short amount of time that was. Nice and dry. There's one little damp spot right there, but I think by the time um, we get uh, to the resin part, that should be dry too. So ju that's just how fast and easy that was. Just a few colors of blue blended together. 
dark to light, a little blue sky, a little sand. Now we're gonna add the fun stuff. So I brought some fun stuff to the party. And what we have here is just clear glass. This is uh, Starfire glass. It's just colorless clear glass. I also brought to our little party a couple of teeny little baby starfish. Might add one of those. And I brought some shells and just some fun little nuggets. These are literally shells that were found on the beach. Just little pieces of shell. Look at that fun piece. Little piece of probably an oyster or something. So we're gonna work with this to get our, if I find somewhere to put it, uh, I'll just, just dump it right here. So we're gonna work with that as well as this Starfire glass um, and, and, and uh, doll up our piece a little bit, all right? Ooh, I got, oops, there went my extension cord. All right, I'm gonna take a quick sip of water. Ah, so thirsty, I've talked way too much today. So I'm gonna start just with some glass and I'm gonna just add some glass to the bottom of my canvas. This is gonna be super sexy once we resin, so don't, don't freak out. You'll see how gorgeous. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glass. I'm gonna leave a little spot over to the right because I think I'm gonna put a pile of shells there and we don't want them to be sitting on top of the glass because they don't sit as well. Okay, so let's get one of these. These are so cute. These were gifted to me by one of our members in the Shattered Circle. That's how good we are in that group. Everybody loves everybody. So we're just gonna add one little starfish right there. They're so cute, aren't they, little babies? So we're gonna add a little starfish. Then I'm gonna put a couple of pieces, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna put just a couple of pieces of these shells. I do like to have a variety of colors. So I think I'm gonna put a couple shells. I think I'll put this one over here. We'll tuck it into that glass. And we'll put a shell. I love this little broken piece. Just hardly a nothing, but it's gonna make such a big difference in the end. So we're gonna put him here. Then we'll put our little starfish right here, peeking out, one, two, three, four. I hate even numbers. I knew I was gonna do that. So we're gonna add some of this color. This is just some uh, bits of glass from a stained glass worker. So we're gonna add some bits of color here just to balance out that little bit of uh, shell. So over here, I'm gonna just tuck in another piece or two. I think this is too big for this piece. It's just a little too big, so we're gonna put it aside and add a few other, just some little nuggets. So, oh, I love this one. It's got some orange in it too, so I think we'll try that. And tuck it in. Everything's falling. I just like to be random. And we got some really clear pieces we'll add in. So cute, I wish I had some birds, but I don't. Look at this piece, spectacular color. We're gonna throw that in too, somehow. All right, so I'm very happy with that. I like the balance and I might add a little bit more glass along the edge just to bring it up a little. Wish I brought some blue glass, but I didn't. Working from home tonight. And let's push this aside. So we're ready to finish this sucker up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my blocks. You always wanna elevate and Well, I could do that, couldn't I? We'll have to let them dry a minute. So I'm gonna use uh, a paintbrush and we'll just draw a couple of birds in the sky. So I'm gonna go into my white, and a bird is just a V, a big V. So we'll just draw a V. We might have to put a little black on it. And a V. 
We'll put one over here too. Let's throw, I don't, let me see if I got some black. Oh, I do. Actually, I have gray. That might be better just to make it stand out a little bit. We'll add a dot of gray just to outline it. So I'm just gonna go in with my brush, load that up. And we'll add just a tiny bit of gray. Make it pop. I'll show you this up close too. Just a hint of a bird. He's so far away. Okay, love it. Okay, so here's what we have going on. There's our newfound little birdies. Here are our glass and shell accents. So what we need to do is elevate this so that when we resin, if we go crazy and have a little too much resin and it drips over the sides, we are not going to make a mess or glue it to my table. So I wanna put this on my blocks, and then I'm gonna tuck my blocks under because we don't wanna glue our blocks on either. So we'll just tuck under the little boards underneath. Oh, we're too high, aren't we? Let's come down. Thank you. We'll come down a little. Ooh, mama's having a hot flash. Okay, so I think we're good. We're a little crooked. So here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to mix some resin. I'm gonna put my gloves on because you always wanna wear your gloves when you're mixing resin. So I'm gonna put on my gloves and I've got to get some more gloves because I've got maybe two pairs of gloves left. I've been neglecting my duties. Impressive, huh, Dave? Are you impressed? So, I have um, some little baby cups. This is only gonna take maybe an ounce of resin or less. And I have these little baby cups that I like to mix in if I mix in small quantities of resin. Whoops. And I forgot my ink pen so because I can't really see the measurement lines on these cups. So I normally take a pen to mark those and I didn't bring it, so I'm gonna just dip my little stylus in one of these colors. We'll do the dark blue, and I'm gonna hit my half ounce line. I don't even think we need, yeah, we'll mix an ounce. So I'm gonna mark my line just with that paint so I'll know how much to mix, because my eyes aren't that great anyway, and I need all the help I can get. So half ounce on each cup, We'll mark that line. I was too tired to go get a pen. So now what I use for my art projects is a product called Art Resin. It is made in the US of A. It is a non-toxic, non-hazmat resin made specifically for art projects. No VOCs, no COV, no BPA, very safe to use. It's even food safe, says the company. So this is what I use exclusively, and uh, it is a 50-50 mix, part A, part B, and so we're gonna go ahead and mix. We're gonna mix one ounce total, probably way too much, but we're gonna mix it anyway. So we'll put a half an ounce of hardener and a half an ounce of resin. I'm gonna set this one down, and I'm gonna get my hardener. I'm gonna put them both right here beside me, and then we'll put one away, that way we don't mix up. So I'm gonna mix Half an ounce of hardener, pour it to the line. Now you gotta be careful when you get close to that line because it's real easy to over pour because it does kind of grow like molasses. So when you get close to your line, you wanna stop and let it kind of catch up and then just do a few little drips at a time until you're there. So that is a half an ounce of hardener. Now I'm gonna move this away from me so I know that I already poured that. So this is my hardener. And now we'll do the resin right up to our line. Les, I used to always mix too much too, but that's when I started uh, having like spare projects on my art table so that if I mixed too much, I knew I could use it because there's nothing worse 
than being in that blind panic when you have too much resin and nowhere to put it. Oh my goodness, I'll be running around the studio like a crazy person. Okay, this is a one ounce cup and we have a half an ounce and a half an ounce. So we need to mix this in a bigger cup because you have to have mix in space. So what I have are these little Dixie cups, plastic, throw away. So we're gonna dump both of these into our little Dixie cup and I'm gonna use my silicone uh, applicator to pour these in. You wanna scrape out as much as you can. Get all that juice out because you don't wanna have a bad mix. If you have a bad mix, you're gonna be sad. You're gonna cry and then you'll have to call me and then we'll cry together and I don't like crying. I don't like crying. Don't make me cry. It's very sad. So that's one. Now we're gonna mix in the other. Get all the juice out. Scrape, scrape. And voila. So now we have to, uh, Regina, for this particular resin, it doesn't matter which one you pour first. You could pour the hardener first or the resin first. It doesn't matter. So what you're gonna do at this point is stir, okay? So we're gonna stir for three minutes. Do not cut yourself short on stirring and mixing because you need to stir really gently for three minutes. If you try to uh, stir it really fast, um, it's gonna incorporate a lot of air into your resin, and then you're gonna have a bubble problem. It's gonna have a lot of bubbles, and it's gonna be hard to get those out. So you're gonna stir really slow, and scrape your sides and the bottom of your mixing container. That way you ensure that everything is mixed up really well and not have a glob of one part or the other in the bottom. So we're gonna do this for three minutes and I'm gonna answer questions while Catherine times me. And so, um, well, I'll answer any questions about resin, about this art project, about the Shattered Circle, um, whatever you need answered. So ask away, ask away. Yes, resin or wipes is what we use. I use these from one of our members sells these wipes. Uh, and um, we'll put a link in here, or if Gina's here, she can put her link in, but they're great for um, cleaning off your tools. I bought silicone cups, Barbara, and I haven't even used them yet. I'm a bad, bad girl. Maybe I'll use them this weekend, but I did buy them. They're, silico they're cups made of silicone, so you don't have the trash, okay? You can uh, clean them out and then peel out the dried resin and reuse them. So, yeah, Gina, put your uh, link in if you're here. So we're gonna stir stir, stir for three minutes. Remember not to beat it to death. You don't wanna uh, minimize as much bubble as possible. Yes. Okay, Donnie, you can use, like I used to use like um, coffee stirs or the little popsicle sticks or anything disposable. So you either, it either needs to be something you can clean resin out of or something disposable. Do not use your good brushes because you're not getting that out of your good brushes, okay? Let me see what somebody said. How, how can I, how long have I been in the group? Oh, how can you find out how long? Uh, Cindy, uh, if you will send me an email, cindy at artshatter.com. What happened? Cindy at artshatter.com. I will look that up and tell you. But if you joined in November, which is when we were open last, you're gonna get the vault at the end of this month. Is that not awesome? So let's see. Uh, go Jaina. Okay, so we're gonna keep mixing. I'll answer any questions that pop up as needed. I think um, my light is, my light's all messed up. 
Yeah, if you'll um, just send me a message and I'll let you know when it renews. And uh, time's up, she said. Okay, so time is up. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna push this away from me just a little. It's a little too close for comforts. And I'm gonna start down here with all this glass. Okay, you're always gonna start in your glass area because it's gonna go down into the glass and then it's gonna self-level and seep out of the glass. And if you resin all this first and then the glass, you're gonna to have too much resin on your art piece and it's gonna be kind of messy, okay? So we're gonna start down here and I'm gonna start on the left side and I'm just gonna drizzle over all my glass and my shells and get it all covered so that it seeps down in and glues everything to our surface. Don't you do it, don't you do it. So you go left to right, that way you know what you've resined and what you haven't, or top to bottom, whichever way, just be consistent. So we're gonna cover it all really generously. You want it glued down really well. I feel like I need some music. Who's singing? You want me to sing? I don't sing, guys. I already threatened that in the Rain Boots Challenge. So how about this? While I'm doing this, anybody who has newly joined the Shattered Circle, give me hearts. I want hearts for new members. I wanna see you out there. Show me your hearts. Hearts for new members. There we go, look at you guys. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Look at all those hearts. You guys, that makes me feel good. This is, y'all are gonna have so much fun, I can't even tell you. We have a bunch of members on this page right now and they are gonna tell you how much fun you're gonna have inside this group. This is gonna be the most fun you had ever. So I'm almost done with my shells and my glass. I'm gonna make sure I get that one really good because it's kind of loosey-goosey. And then what I'm gonna do is take the leftover resin and I'm gonna scrape it out over the top half of my canvas. See, that one ounce was perfect. I thought it might be too much, but it actually turned out to be perfect. So now at this point, you can use your resin applicator or this little applicator thing to um, spread this excess resin around or you can use your hand. You can use your hand and just spread it around and pull it around to cover your entire canvas or you can use this. Since I already started with my hand, I'm just gonna finish out and move that resin around. You wanna cover the entire canvas top. I don't resin the sides, mostly because I don't like the drips that it creates. And to me, it's a waste of resin. And resin, you know, it's not cheap. If you've done a piece, you know resin's not cheap. So I don't do my sides and nobody has complained about it in 10 years. So we're not worrying about that. So we have made sure it's all covered not dripping down my sides anywhere. I'm gonna go around and before I hit it with my torch, I'm gonna look at it real close from a couple of angles and make sure I haven't missed any spots. So I'm gonna look at it from like one side and then the other, let the sh light shine across it and see if I can see any missed spots and I do not. So now I am safe to take my gloves off and I'm gonna take them off carefully because what I don't want is to spatter this resin everywhere. So I'm gonna just take them off real gentle, inside out. That way you're not getting resin all over the universe. So throw that out. Okay, so now we're gonna do something crazy. If you've never done an art piece, um, uh, if you've never done an art piece, uh, then don't let this intimidate you, okay? I use this torch 
because I do a lot of art pieces and I do a lot of oversized art pieces, okay? This is what you're gonna use to pop any of those air bubbles that we incorporated while we were mixing our resin. So, so uh, I'm just very careful, June. I'm just super, super careful at the bottom. And if you get the, if it starts dripping even slightly, just wipe it off with your gloved finger and uh, keep, just keep it to a minimum. And I also try to keep it off the edge. It's not really as close to the edge as it looks because the camera is at an angle. It's really up off the edge, and I'll show that to you in a, just a second. Okay, so I use this torch to pop my bubbles because it's just what I like. But you can use a heat gun, one of those embossing heat guns from Hobby Lobby. Um, you can use a one of those creme brulee type kitchen torches. It's a really small little baby torch. You, and uh, you know, last but not least, you can use a blow dryer on high heat, low air. It's not gonna get all the bubbles, but it's gonna get most of the big ones. So you can do that in a pinch. So I'm gonna use my propane torch. I'm gonna fire her up. And you wanna keep the flame off of your art piece. And you also, see how my hand's moving constantly? You also wanna keep moving. You don't wanna stop and focus on one spot. You wanna keep that hand moving or you're gonna burn your canvas. <sighs> Resin burns fairly easy and if you stop and focus in on one little spot, you're gonna burn that resin and you're gonna have a big yellow orange spot right in the middle of your piece and then you're gonna be sad. So I see a little piece of something here. I'm gonna dig out, it was like a brush hair or something. So now I'm just gonna check out and make sure I don't have any debris because this is not a clean room. I have four cats, guys. This, this room ain't clean. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any debris that stands out. Da -da 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 -da. There's something there, I can't figure out what it is. And we are done. I wanna show you this close up. There's no resin on the side, so I wanna show you how awesome this is and look what the uh, resin does to that glass. It really makes it pop and stand out so pretty. So let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna turn you back up just a little bit and see if I can't show you no, that's not gonna work. I have to tump it the wrong way. So, I kinda wanted to show you close up. Let me see if I can do it this way. So, look how pretty and how that resin makes the uh, beach sand and glass shine. So pretty. And look how simple that was. We literally did this in less than 30 minutes. The whole piece, start to finish. Took off the wrapper, painted our beach scene, got it dry, put on our glass, did our resin in less than 30 minutes. That is some good stuff right there. Okay, so I'm gonna try.